Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Guys, welcome back to the show. We're in a new space, but we're in the same year with same uh, friends. What do you mean we're in the same year? 2024. Yeah. Well, I guess we started. (laughs) Welcome to the About Last Night podcast, coming to you live from Burbank, California, the home of Jay Leno. Um, Was he born here? I just remember when they would go like, well, that's old. That's a Carson one. But then when they go, what was the... Jay Leno Tonight Show theme. Jay from Burbank. I remember. There it is. So Leno always said he was in Burbank because he was. And Kevin Eubanks was there too. Kevin Burbanks. Kevin Burbanks was there. Ellen DeGeneres lived here for a little bit. Ellen DeBurbanks. Okay. And so she's not here. Ellen is not here to verify or clarify. Watch that microphone. Or um, give more context to your joke. Do you have a lot of Ellen bits in your stand-up? Yes. You're fresh off a headlining gig. <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. In, uh, <laughs> all right. In, uh, in, in uh, San Francisco, California. Oh, yeah. At Cobb's Comedy Club. Rich, Rick, Rick, Rick is, Rick is um, one of my best friends. One of the funniest guys I know. You, you know ta- that. Who are you talking to? I don't know. One of the, uh, one of the things I love about Rick is his uh, persona on stage. And people are getting to see it more because you're out there doing stand-up more. San Francisco. First of all, I want to know, trepidations going into it. G- going into <laughs> pulling up Amazon Prime. Just put up cute cats. <laughs> <laughs> what is your uh, go-to YouTube rabbit hole if you're trying to get a mood boost? What is your say that go- ten times fast. Yeah, I can't even say it f- eight times fast. What is your, what is your go-to, go-to, go-to go- rabbit hole? Go-to YouTube rabbit hole when you're looking for a mood boost. What is your go-to YouTube rabbit hole? What do you, wait, what is your go-to YouTube rabbit hole? What is your go-to YouTube rabbit hole when you're looking for a mood boost? Oh, there's more? Yeah, when you're looking for a mood boost. That's the tough one. What is your go-to YouTube rabbit hole when you're looking for a mood boost? What is your go-to YouTube rabbit hole when you're looking for a mood boost? Go. What is your go-to YouTube rabbit hole when you're looking for a mood boost? What is your go Switch! Switch! What is your go-to, <laughs> <laughs> what is your go-to YouTube rabbit hole when you're looking for a mood switch? Oh, boost. boost. Good night, everybody. brought to you by Boost Mobile. <laughs> the only phones rabbits. Um, Look up on YouTube. When people take pictures, unless m- most of the time, and they're like, <laughs> like we're taking pictures, I don't like to look at it. Right. I feel like this is a similar. I wanted to not see what, what we look like as much as just knowing, like, if the camera's on you, I could like be fine. When you're editing Taiso, do you like to watch that? Are there episodes where you're like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to rewatch? Because oh, yeah. I think everything's always funnier in the moment, right? You know, Sandra Bullock in The Blind Side says, um, "I uh, can't. I don't want your laugh." <laughs> no, that's that's in Varsity speed. Blues. Oh, oh. Uh, she says uh, uh, about trying clothes on. You're never gonna like something as much as you do when you try it on at the store. Now, I don't agree to that. How the all fuck the time. do you remember that line? I'm a huge fan of clothes analogies, <laughs> and I do think about it though when I do try something on. If I don't love it, I might. If I love it, I might love it more later. Right. But if I don't love it there, I'm not. I don't get it. It used to be the McDonald's slogan. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I used to do a joke like before About McDonald's I, before the slogan before I moved to L.A. It was like I don't know if I did it in my first set, but it was like in my first year. Could you stand start stand up in Cleveland? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Do you eat something spicy? <laughs> <laughs> that. I don't think we'd use that take if it was a movie and the guy comes over and he goes, Well, it would be if... He had a pepper, but we don't have peppers on us, so we're going to give you a wheat then. But you can act, right? And I go, and I take offense to it from the director. I go, yeah, man, even though I'm like a day player. But he's like, he doesn't give a fuck. He's like, you can act, right? And I go, yeah. He, go, he goes, act like the wheat then is a spicy pepper. And you say action, and now you're the director. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So we need you to act uh, like this wheat then is very spicy, so could we see you? We- sure, sure. <sighs> So what I was going to suggest is if the direction was also, the wheat then is really spicy, so you can't talk, but you're asking the DJ to raise the volume. <laughs> the volume or the volume? Oh, did I say volume? It sounded like it. But that's just me with a, you know, 
I've got corrective ear tissue. What does that mean? Google it. Huh? Anytime, I, I used to do that in high school, by the way. When I would say something and people would go, what does that mean? i go, you haven't seen that? <laughs> oh, I was so, uh, Mainly I to a girl named Siobhan McAvoy. I'd say something that I thought was funny. You know, you Didn't say hit. people's names a lot, and it's fun, but you say their first and last name, and it makes me wonder. Ooh, you're good. <laughs> okay. I and recognizing it. first and last names. But you're really confident about saying people's first and last names. What if I was like, David Sampson? Well, you'd be like, that's not a real guy. Wait, but you were just saying a real person, right? That's a real person. Yeah, I believe you. What I, I'm suggesting. I'm going to list five real people from my life. Love Ready? this game. I already say more and more rules. Tanner Kidd. Fake. Whoa, sounds like a Disney star who wasn't in the doc, but he, uh, the Nickelodeon doc, the N Disney Nickelodeon. So he, um, he's a real kid. San Francisco is good. <laughs> <laughs> Cobb's Comedy Club, sold out. It was my first time in San Fran. I'm real proud of you. Thanks, dude. I'm real proud of you. Um, something happened in the show. Yeah, um, we can do it. We can talk about it next time. Rick, when you... Uh, when you Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You put the tickets on sale. Then what happened? All right. So we put the tickets on sale. In less than a day, they all sold out. Awesome. Now, that's not entirely true. But they all sold out. And what's time? You know, new play, same year. New sip. And uh, so I, yeah, so there's something I wanted to tell you that I didn't want to talk about on my podcast because I didn't want everybody to keep doing it. It was kind of flattering, but what? it was really annoying. What? And I'm not, sh I, I, I don't want to say it because oh. then people are going to just start doing it more. Just say it. You're going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> Too late. I'll just say this. I won't give all the specific ones. You know, there's so many bits in, in, in Taiso. Oh, yeah. And like one liners and throwaway, all these things. So many times they could happen organically too. Like you say something and then something happens, yeah. whatever the thing might be. I don't want to give specific ones. The audience was just doing them so much that it was distracting. So it's almost like when Chappelle had, I'm rich, bitch. And I, he almost walked off stage when I saw him at Mandalay Bay the year after Chappelle show came out and that became a popular oh, sketch. People were just yelling that. Yep. Yeah. So your version of that, but more because more bits. There's a lot of them, and and at first it was. Were they when you took a sip? Did they do go go go? Every fucking Give, time. Well, just share some of them first of all, because Tyson fans are going to be watching I, this episode. I, yeah, it, it, yes, yeah. Every, G give me g g what else? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to. Then get the fuck out of <laughs> here. I don't want to talk about any more of them. <laughs> Why? Um, because I don't want to. I, I don't, don't want to. It's too late, by the way. It it's too late because, uh, and I, from my uh version. Dr. Phil stuff, people are screaming out, we'll be right back before I even do the bit. Sometime, and it's and I it sucks because I'm finding organic ways now to do it in the show, to kind of throw to it, like when I'm doing crowd work, like on this past show I was talking to a, in Detroit, a lot of Tyso fans, by the way, coming out, quoting episodes of us, mm -hmm. quoting bits, great, love you guys. And, uh, <sighs> and, uh, and uh, I try to find a way when I'm talking to people in the crowd to organically throw to it. Just kind of let them know, like, uh, I know why a lot of you are probably here, right? And so I was talking to this couple, and uh, you guys together? No, we were, though. Uh, oh, how, how long, did you, how long did, you go, did you break up? A year ago. We still live together. Oh, shit. How's that going, my man? Not good. And she's like, yeah, it's not great. I go, why? to the show together? Yeah. And I go, why? And yeah, exactly, I asked them that, too. And they're like, well, we're still friends. And I go, how is it living together? And he goes, dude, not great. She brings guys home a lot. And, and she goes, yeah, it's just, I don't know, but he seems cool with it. He's like, I mean, I'm kind of cool with it. Oh. And I go, do you hear her banging away? And he goes, four or five nights a week. And everyone goes, oh, and there's a beat. And I go, we'll be right back. <laughs> Got a big pop. And then I divulged a little bit more. I also have to acknowledge from, to, from my comments now about this. Yeah. I get so many people saying that I'm stealing. We'll be right back. Oh. From you doing it now. Hilarious. It pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. It pisses. I don't. Well, find a new catchphrase. I don't know what to I've tell been, you. I've been doing it for the whole the whole time. I don't think that you took. They're it. so different, by the way. Very. I have merch that's. Uh, we'll be right back, and we're back. Yes. I've been doing it for the longest time, and also you've been on my podcast more than anybody else. Yes. We have done. They're trying to pit us together, by the way, and it's not happening. I. You know what? <laughs> Fun documentary. Adam versus Rick. Um. A thirty for thirty. 
Well, I have to be uh, 40 over 40 <laughs> soon. Are you 40? Not yet. When? 14 more years. Let's go. Well, it'll take a little bit. You're 26. Mm-hmm. I always forget that. I, I know. Because I, cause I, when I met you then, I quick math, you were... 14. Yep. And I was... 47. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No, but the do- a documentary of, of like if like there was some like there's some we'll be right back beef between us. I mean, obviously we're letting it Funny. out now so yeah. that people yeah. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll edit around it. But like if there was something to where, yeah, I don't know. Just um, Will Sasso and I had some beef that was very very real. For real? Uh, yeah. And uh, everybody also in all the comments knew it was real, even if there was a chance it wasn't. Uh oh, G something spicy. What I'm saying is, even saying this, and it's out there, people will still believe. Yeah, it. So I do think there's something fun about. Yeah, I mean, look, there are podcasts that take full advantage of the fake beef, and there was a while when that was really happening, right? But there's a there's a different version of it than totally. really being totally. shit to people. I don't think people want that from us, by the way. It's the amount of people that it wouldn't be it wouldn't be real. No. And the amount of people that came up to me that are like, I get high and watch the you and Rick episodes nonstop. Like, rewatch, watch. A lot of people loving Santa to where I'm like, maybe next time there's a, like, I don't know if it's a short or a, like, mini doc like I did with Tony Caruso before that was included uh, with his appearance on Take Your Shoes Off. But some sort of... What are you talking about? Just doing something bigger with the Santa character. Oh, you don't have headphones on. Oh, yeah. People don't know what you're talking about. They know. They know. They don't? Okay. Some people didn't. A lot of people uh, comment on, uh, like, the timestamp. Oh, this is Adam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, to figure it out later. So funny. Um, I, I, Did your parents know? I don't know if they saw that one. I don't remember. Um, they were on the live show. Your mom was. What live show? In uh, San Francisco. Oh, this, the you're saying my stand-up show. Yeah. Dude, that was so fun. So break the show down for me. But Did also, you- I wanted to say one more thing about that, uh, about you coming on the pod. So so I have been trying to do more clips recently, and I like to look, like I look through comments to see blue, like when people at something, like scroll through yeah, and yeah, it says yeah, a timestamp, yeah. yeah, and yeah, I'll yeah. oftentimes check timestamps to see if this will make a clip or just see what it was. And people are always either going back or refinding the ones with you and the ones with you and Brent. Obviously more you, because there's tons of them. But people love those, and when they do, when... Like, a lot of times I've already found the clips, but I'll still, when it's one of ours, I'll click it just to watch, to see what the thing was. And I end up watching, like, 5, 15 minutes all the time of something. They're just so fun. I don't, I don't know what it would be, but to make, like, a super cut of just, like... Yeah, I think you could do that. Because it really, like, the Sleepover series, which we've literally done, but it really, a lot of our episodes do feel like... if It feels like teenagers having sleepovers. Yeah. We should invite teenagers over to have sleepovers when no, we record it. No, but... But there's other ideas though, like Don't you uh, think just a whole bunch of teenage boys just like hanging out like when we were teenage boys. I mean, it would be funny the same way Beck Bennett used to do those AT and T commercials uh-huh. in a round table with kids. Yeah, I think doing- there is something funny about. I mean, look, I do it with my nephew uh, who's nine. I mean, like stay up late, play video That's games, too young to have sleepovers with. <laughs> yeah, but also just talking about it as a podcast, not actually. You know. No, he's very funny. He'd actually be great to. So. Last few times I was home in Seattle, we you know played football, whatever, wrestled all day, and then stayed up. You were just wrestling, had ice cream, wrestling with him. Oh, he's just yeah, he because uh, I don't know how much he's wrestling with pops and mom or his sisters, but so and he also feels like he can really go. And I get get on the ground really good. We put pillows all over the floor and jump so off the couch. Yeah, but he really and I go for it as much as I can. But he really you fucking try comes hard as at you me can to beat him up. Yeah, to defend myself, he fucking <laughs> <laughs> he'll throw some haymakers. <laughs> And even when yeah, we just kids do when you play fighting, they just because you're bigger than them, they think, oh, I could just go as hard as I want. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he can't when we're doing one on one football drills, like where it's just basically I throw the ball to him and it's just, you know, you're trying to get across the line, uh-huh. just run past. We'll do that for three, four hours. And then I'll take a break and he'll be like, I'm back, dude, 10 minute break, five minutes in. He's like, let's go. And I'm like, hey, motherfucker. Yeah. And um, finish that. I need a couple more minutes. <laughs> And then, okay, I'm going ahead. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's a parrot, and he uh, he then wants to play video games all night, and we, and he talks mad shit when he plays video Does games he swear? at nine. Oh yeah, 
His dad's a rapper. You told me that. Dirte. Right. Dirte. Shout out to Dirte. You talk about it on stage. A lot. Yeah. It's in the special. Could probably do an hour on Dirte. Could probably do an hour on Dirte and an hour on his son. My nephew. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Have you ever had Dirte on the pod? No. At some I point, might do it a might doc- be nice if we do a, uh, if we do a rap episode with him. Are you fucking or at least you know we do an episode. And he I comes would, in at the end for the for the as a guest. I like, would love to see his dynamic with you because he's really funny, really likable, and got love a good those, sense love, of humor. Love all those things. But I don't know if he's been. I think he would think you're funny, but he would take a minute. It'd, it'd be funny to see him kind of like feel you out and get used to your sensibility. Like if you're doing a bit, I think he might not know it's a bit at first. Because he's not around people that do bits like that. Right. But he's in he's in show business. Yeah, he drives a bus now. Oh. Show busness. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Bring out the bus yeah, sign. Yeah, I, I don't was, know. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. show busness, the thing comes down. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, San Francisco is good. San Francisco is good. Do you like Cobbs? Had you been there before? Did you I'd walk around the San city? San Francisco. Are you fucking kidding me? Yes, I'm there all the time. So, that's right. Cleveland, L.A., New York. So, my mom lived in San Francisco in her 20s. And all growing up... Let's cut to a clip. Wow. Show business was even big back then. Quit laughing. It's my mom. <laughs> so... Uh, my butt story. <laughs> growing up, she always talked about how much she loved San Francisco. And it was one of the best times of her life. And, and she has these two friends that... They lived in the Sally same... Sally Field and Mrs. Doubtfire? Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's okay. And they lived in the same uh, <laughs> building or same area and blah, 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 blah. And I've heard about these women. Maybe I met them when I was a toddler. But I, but they were just... My mom's, like, such good friends. And she's always talking about San Francisco. So I was in Cleveland, and I'm like, uh, do you want to come with me to San Francisco? And she's like, I can't because blah, 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 blah. I'm like... It's where you were from. Figure it's where, it out. She's from there again. I'm sorry, or just lived there. Uh, she she lived in uh, she lived in California from when she was at Los Angeles That's when right. she was 11 until she was like 19. Then moved to San Francisco for a few years. Oh, she hadn't she, been back. Um, she's been back a few times. Still, with not um, with her son. Correct. Uh, she met she met my dad in San Francisco. My dad was there for work, and she met my dad, um, on Friday, and my dad proposed to her on Sunday. You got to go back to the proposed spot. Um, I did send a picture of mom and, uh, mom and me <clears throat> to the group chat with dad and, and my mom and I, cool. and he goes, that's so like, I don't remember the word, but so like, not symbolic, but like so nice. Like yeah. X years ago, that was us. And, uh, being in San Francisco with my mom and then meeting her two friends who are, I mean, they're so funny and so specific. One of them is just doing edibles and is just kind of out there. And she's also like. You could tell she's really smart, but also, like, she literally ran into a wall twice. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one is a little sharp, more like, like, what the hell are you two talking about? Like, kind of shares my point of view with some of the stuff. Great. And my mom is just, everything is the most beautiful and loving, and she's loving, and she's crying, and she's, and, and the, seeing the dynamic, I really saw my mom, like, in her 20s. Like, this is what this dynamic is. And it was so awesome and then they got to come and see my show and it was great and uh i brought my mom i talked about my mom for like 20 minutes uh, during the show cool and like uh, what would you just well i have material about like some of my ocds and how i as i've gotten older and went back home and realized where some of these things not necessarily came from but were magnified um my mom doesn't care my mom will cut her tomatoes on the counter where my cat was just walking and like doesn't wipe anything. Wow. And I'm like, that's, that's even that's gross to me. Thank you. Also, that's my mom. But like <laughs> that kind of stuff. And my mom, I talk about like how long she washes her hands for and is they wa- is she washing them or is she wetting them? Pre-COVID. Um, yeah. Did and co- post. did co- okay, so it's a quick I wash. I taught her it's she'll she it's a, she gaslights She me. damps them. She dampens. She gets them wet. And she gaslights me and she tells me and she doubles she she but I'm like I, I heard from the flush to the door open there wasn't enough time. Did you hear a wipe? No, but if you don't hear a wipe, did it really happen? Yes. Hold that thought. Right. We'll be right back. <laughs> That's mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, I so I say mom come up on stage, right? And my mom walks up on stage and I then like I help her up, she gets on the stage, and then I walk off the stage in my head thinking like 
well, I just set my mom up. Now my mom has to do stand up. She's going to be like, what do I do? Yeah. And so talk. And she just go and goes into it. And she's just getting laughs. Natural. And she's talking about her side of the story of the washing of the hands. And the bubble. not even faced by the 400 plus people killing it. Wow. And I go. Well, about, they're also loving it because they. Yeah. She's but, walking into a very supportive. Yes. She's not walking into a David Tell crowd. Um, I don't know what his crowds are like, but not familiar with Debbie Glassman. Some of them might. Okay. But yes, they're not only familiar with her because of me and the pod, I also had been talking about her, so the setup is there. The reveal's great. My mom is just killing. And then I go back up to have a conversation with her, and my mom uh, goes, uh, this is really fun. <laughs> and I go, right? Cool. <laughs> like, my mom tasted it. And I it like, I feel like my mom could do it. Obviously, you know, it takes a lot. Oh, yeah. Lot, but I, I just, it would be so fun if, like, like, if I had a special, if this was back when, like, there was the bonus DVDs or whatever, like, by the way, if you pre-order, you get the bonus, you know, half-hour Debbie Glassman special yes. or something. But she was just going like this. She a- didn't realize until 10 minutes in, she has hearing aids that she never wears because she doesn't hear well, but she hears well enough. She brought the hearing aids. She went up on stage. She didn't bring her glasses. She couldn't see anything, and she didn't realize she couldn't see for 20 minutes because she could hear so well. <laughs> so she's like, wait, I can't see anything. Oh, That's so funny. <laughs> That's 20 minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah. Edit that out. Make it 10 minutes. Uh, I love that she had so much fun, but also, duh. She is so dialed into who she is, which I think it makes it an easier time on stage to be exploratory and play around and just have fun and be present if you are 110% you and you just know how to be and I don't know she's also been on how much performing had your mom even done before I mean, she was a part of the podcast I mean performing on stages in front of audiences not much but wow. like as a saleswoman she sell perfume and she crowds okay. literally would come around for her doing her thing because she was being so interactive and come here for me I mean she's like like the guy in Pete's Dragon oh, I forget I what remember. he's selling remember but they, he's like, yes. pass him a quaddy, yes. pass him a quaddy. Yeah, well, it's called a, that's like snake, snake oil, oil sales. salesman. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> 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 um, she, uh, she's natural. Yeah. But she wasn't nervous, which is so funny to me. Why didn't you bring dad or uh, uncles out? Um, my, my dad didn't come to San Francisco. Fine. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know. Okay, so the show is now. there. Because, you know, when we, you've done like a Rick and Friends, you know, it's you doing maybe 30 minutes of stand up. Yeah. So doing an hour, if the show's fuller, you're having to, I don't know how much more writing you did. You've got a lot of silly bits, but are you finding yourself, is it kind of morphing into like, I don't know if you saw Alex Edelman's special. I haven't, uh, I haven't yet either, but I've seen a lot of the clips and I it's a one man show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but he was a comic. And then I think, you know, almost like the way Hassan has kind of, morphed his show i love people that are just using the stage for whatever they want you know mm-hmm. that's the point be funny and and connect um but both those guys were on stage con- and still will pop into clubs and stuff but their show more so probably the same thing right um and so do you feel like it's maybe going that way or is it no like when you're saying you were diving into stuff with your mom like is that 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 was that was uh well bringing my mom on stage was after the hour I oh, my gotcha. mom on stage. I did an hour and then okay. I put my mom on stage. Okay. Is the hour all all silly bits the whole time? Um, some crowd work maybe. Uh, I'll do crowd work sometimes if like because some of my bits involve a little like uh, interaction with them. But like I'll do crowd work if like there's a fun thing and I'm feeling it. But I'm not right. working on like that that. Uh, it's not really a crowd work show, no. Um, it's a lot about, yeah. The, I don't know how to how to des- ex- describe it. I don't know if I want to. That's okay. Um, but it's it's more personal. Like it's, it's a lot of silly, but it's very personal. It's cool. it's uh, about the way I see things and um, uh, the way I grew up and uh, the differences and similarities to when I was a kid to now and what I've learned and comparing them to before some awareness I had and how I saw it and what I missed comparing to it now. Um, You're getting really reflective and introspective in your 26 years of life. Yeah, uh, I am in my real life uh, that way. And um, and silly, uh, I always felt that the silly stuff wasn't mutually exclusive to the real stuff. Um, but when people still always say, oh, I'm, I'm always on, he's always on, I, I'm sure you get this too. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that the stuff you're talking about and the names that may sound funny, but they're really, sorry. Like, you point you at bring, me a lot. Yeah, I understand. 
uh, you'd bring up how you worked at Albertsons and this really silly story, but like, yeah. no, no, that's real yeah. stuff. Um, I have found that when people come and see me live, they tell me often, because when people are seeing me live and, and it's been very cool since the podcast started doing more yes. like oh yeah, people, even in town, like there's like oh yeah, people coming to see me um, when I don't even know how they knew I was on the show. And because I don't post much stand up, uh, they've never seen me do it. And they're like, I, I think they had an expectation of like it being, I don't, I actually don't know what, well, they what thought. do they say? Um, some people said I didn't know what to think. Uh, some people thought I, uh, uh I was surprised. It's always, I mean, they're not going to come up to me and say something negative, but it's always very positive yes. because they wanted to come tell me something. Um, but I do think like I'm, I'm excited for people to, who know the podcast, who don't know my stand up to, to see it because it is, uh. It's an extension of the pod, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I for the first time, I, mean, I, I felt this way for a couple years. It's I think more I'm heightened. Really, You're I think performing I'm good now, though. Yeah. Like for the past few years, I'm like, it took me a lot longer. Like you've been a good stand-up comedian since I met you, and then you're just going like this. I've, I for the first ten plus years was like, oh, I'm gonna be good someday. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe even twelve plus years. Uh, yeah. I feel like, oh, I know. How to, I'm like good at this now. And like I like showing it off. Like I want pe people people well, don't know I do this. Totally. And I feel that way in just in the past probably three to five years. About your stand up? Yeah, oh yeah. And just I'm really like like pumped for people, like even just getting this bump from whatever, you know, mm -hmm. Phil stuff, Kill Tony stuff, Tyso stuff, just being around enough and more people finding your stuff. I little pressure at first of like right? oof, man, now everyone's here. Everyone is Tell me about that. She did five sold out shows in Detroit, 380. The room holds a show. Awesome. Awesome. Denver next week's 280. We added a six show. A little bit of pressure of like, oh man, they're all coming for it. But then immediately. But the pressure of what? That, uh, like, just wanting it to be, now they're all coming for it. Right. But they already then, like me. What if I don't, what if I, what if I do something that they don't like? Sure. That was there for literally the first show of this type of new um, uh, just attention and went away. Yeah, in five minutes because then it was just like oh I've been doing do a seventy yeah. yeah and you just settle in and I was but I I had a few moments of thinking of, of just thinking about like just analyzing each moment instead of doing what I do which is be present and just, say, and just say that again what do you mean you had a few uh, just when I would a crowd work thing would start to happen and I was like not listening and being present and I almost reverted to old two years into stand up where I'm thinking about oh you got to make this funny right. Instead of being present and trusting yourself, which is what I do all the time now. But when you, I was first starting crowd work, first few years of stand up, you know, I would, I, as soon as I would talk to somebody or if they, they would yell something out, I'd be like, fuck, you gotta think of something funny, you gotta think of something right. funny. And not even listening. And so then when they. Like when you come and take your shoes off. What's that? <laughs> I would venture to assume some people don't talk enough on your show. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not gonna let them. But uh, also, it's funny because you'll you just keep going. Yes. So, but when you but I said when I said like not, you're not listening to me, like I take your shoes off. Even then, you go, huh? <laughs> you go, what's that? Well, that was a joke. Um, was it? Run it back. Um, you said being present. Uh, and it, my mom says be funny. My mom's because I was in Cleveland. I did some guest spots at Hilarities with Ari oh, Shafir, great. and my mom goes be funny. And I know she's just saying it, but I say I don't like like. That's not my job. Yeah. Like, I, I probably will be, but like, I, I, I and now she I say, don't say be funny. Like, I can't control whether I'm funny or not. Just say be present. Cause that's like the best, the yeah. best opportunity I have. My mom says, have fun. Just have fun. Cause she thinks she read a Michael Jordan quote somewhere where he said, when I was at the free throw line of a basketball game, just do what Michael Jordan says. Fuck it. Just have fun. <laughs> I don't think that's what Michael Jordan was saying. Maybe Scotty Pippen said that. Yeah. Maybe Steve Kerr said that. It was not a Jordan quote. She still to this day uses that. And that was. 25 years ago but that's i think just have fun is is closer yeah. to be present yes than, than be, be funny because be funny is is, uh, is an objective yes. is a is a is an expectation yes but being present is just uh uh is just a a, a, a piece of a frame of mind do you want to travel more and do more live shows now or is this it's gonna I'm be going to but no that's the reason i ha that's the reason i haven't i hate it i hate Rick, i hate traveling it's i know it, I, i'll be honest i'm i have a few free weekends from now until december but I'm striking while the iron's hot because yeah. I want to buy a house and uh, and I want you to live in the guest house, and then <laughs> and then maybe we'll start a podcast together or Called just guest or house. just or at least just put up a basketball hoop. 
riddle me this. It's not going to happen, but if you did live in the guest I house, know what riddle or me in this a, means, or in a house like a J, let's say, man, let's just say I bought two cool houses in Sherman Oaks and was like going to have one for friends, whatever. And you're just like, I'm going to live it for a bit or stayed there. And there was a basketball hoop in the backyard. Realistically, how often do you think you'd come over and we play basketball? Um, could I walk to your place or do I have to drive? Walk. Oh, I'll go shoot around f- three days a week. Cool. Maybe more. All right. That's worth it. You know what I... I Follow up. How many times do you think we let the neighbor kids come over, use the hoop, grab snacks from the fridge? It's your place, your fridge. Do it. I, I don't know. I mean, when I go to my parents' house, uh, my parents now... We still live in the same place I did when I was a kid, and it's in this area where there's a lot of people. It's families. To give out the address. Uh, and my parents are one of the few parents that are still there because others that have come in are people that now have their kids that are going to school. And when I go home, my mom, our neighborhood is unbelievable. And yeah. my mom, everybody's friends with everybody. And yeah. it's such a beautiful, it's, it's it's small town. Last time I was there with David Sullivan. That's right. People, probably four or five Guest stars in the neighborhood uh-huh. came by to pop by to say hello. It was awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. But also, also, it's funny that when I, I go home, I'm this kid, and then other people have kids, and I associate with the kids. Like, I'm one of the kids because the parents are talking. But a lot of these parents are my age, you know, or wow. a couple of years older than me. But I look at them as like, hey, Mr. and Mrs., you know what I mean? Like, I think of it yep. because they're my parents' yep. friends. But uh, so we have a, the hoop, and it goes up and down. And as opposed to uh, that stays at 10 feet. Gotcha. And uh, the kids come over and uh, they like, they want to challenge you to a dunk contest. All, all, no, all the time we just hear dribbling outside and there's, they, there's always kids and the, and then they knock on the door. Could you lower it? If it's somebody who wants it lower right? and my parents love it. I'm fine with it. Um, but I don't love that when I'm like, uh, there'll be times where I'm just editing and then like someone wants to come and like, Hey, could you raise the hoop? And I'm like, if you're old enough to shoot on it, you could raise the fucking hoop. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's constantly, multiple times a day. But it, there is something really sweet about, like, the neighborhood. <laughs> it, I just pictured it being an adult that came over one time. And yeah, you we raise it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point I'm getting at is if I were wanting to use that all the time, yep. I don't want to have to be, like, <sighs> kicking kids off my hoop. I hear you. Okay. What do you think is better, candy or nuts? That's a really, really bad question. All right. <laughs> no, 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 I was kidding. Um, where uh, on a plane, nuts. Um, in a movie theater, candy. Great answer. True or false? Lindsay Lohan liked one of my reels. Or grapes are more expensive nowadays. Well, you mean which one is true and which one is false? Either one. I think they're both true. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> also, the ambiguity of these days. <laughs> Also, uh, dude, somebody told you you should prep with some questions and you didn't want to. No. And now you're trying it for the first time. Oh, yeah. That's what this <laughs> looks like. Yeah. This is just me trying to have some fun. Um, I know. Let's see. I've been putting this new serum on my face. It's this vi- It's and You're a big serum guy, huh? I've gotten into serums. Which sounds like Dr. Claw's like, anecdote, right? I know who Dr. Claw is, but I can't picture that. So picture like Gadget being like, we found the serum. And Claw's like... I'll get you gadget and your serums next time. And your serums, too. And your serums, too. Does that hurt you if you did that for 10 minutes? Let's see. (laughs) (laughs) I can't do it. Hey, guys, Adam Ray here. Hope you're enjoying the episode. Look, everyone wants to start their year off right. And for me, that means making sure I'm eating well and have enough energy to do everything that I want to do. Okay, but look, I'm not going to run out and 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 butcher every day to get a fresh cut of quality meat that's that's not gonna happen i'm not not an idiot that's why good chop is a lifesaver for me good chop offers fully customizable boxes of high quality meat and seafood that they deliver right to your door on your schedule okay the products are vacuum sealed and frozen at peak freshness so you can stock your freezer and cook when you want no one's telling you when or how you do it whenever you want and you get to choose from over 70 high quality cuts 100% 100% grass-fed ribeyes, USDA prime filet mignon, free-range and organic chicken breast, pork tenderloin, and thick-cut bacon, just to name a few. They also offer sustainable and wild-caught seafood, salmon, Pacific cod, scallop shrimp, and more. Is your mouth watering, or do you got cat and mouth? Maybe a little bit of both, but look, if you want to cook up 
a great meal for yourself, for a loved one, for a hater, for a player, for your family. This is who you want to start messing with. Good Chop is the spot for you. I'm telling you, there's no other place I get my meat from and no other place I want to get my meat from unless it's a brothel in Amsterdam and that's what I'm looking for and I get a little too high and I'm like, hey, what do the fellas got to offer? And they go, oh, I didn't know you thought you came in here with your wife. And you go, yeah, but now I want to try the meats. Unless it's that, Good Chop is where you guys want to go and it won't cost you a fortune, okay? Good Chop's price per meal starts at just $3.74. $3.74. Good Chop especially prides itself on sourcing meat that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones. That's the big thing that people are into these days, getting the extra crap out of their meat. You want only the good stuff. So, because they're confident in the quality of their cuts, they offer a 100% money-back guarantee. Love Good Chop or get your money back. It's that easy, all right? So start messing with Good Chop right now. Get the meats and the treats that you want. Go to goodchop.com slash ALN120 and use promo code ALN120 to get 120 bucks off your first four boxes. That's ALN120 at goodchop.com slash ALN120 for $120 off Good Chop and your boxes. Does that sound good? Does that taste good? Oh, yeah, your mouth's full. You can't answer. That's what she said. Enjoy the episode. There so, is, I'm uh, uh, the serum. It's it's. I'm feeling it now. It's like a serum lot. goes on after the cream. Give me the order of operation where the serum falls into play. Uh, so you, first, you would put on a um, if you put on any type of toner or something or like a rose water that would go on first. This is after you wash your face. You have a whole regimen, yeah. You do have nice skin. Thank you. I've it, it's yeah, it's nice. It's so, I've never seen. I mean, do you have zits and pimples? And, I have a big one right here now. Yeah, uh, I've been uh, working a little bit, and when I put on makeup. Uh, it does, so I often either request no makeup or very little. But here's my routine at night. Uh, I wash my face with Cetaphil, very gentle. Rose water. That's a mist, like a misty. Yes. It's a mist. Um, and then I uh, I used to then just put on my, my face lotion, and that was it. But now I got a couple of new products. I, I'm putting on this. Uh, Do it for QVC. Because I could. You do. Well, I like to speak in things uh, when things are demonstrative, and I don't have it with me. You might get your own skincare line someday. I don't think that I'd be. I, I could sell it. But oh yeah, my, you could. I couldn't be the. I'm, I'm not. I'm not like. That's for beautiful people, more specifically. I'm not somebody that someone looks like. Oh, I want to look like him. But you're the guy that makes guys go. Maybe I should be using this serum. Do you think you want to use it? Just you talking about serums is getting me all juiced up about it. Yeah, all right. Seriously, I wash my face maybe twice a month with Clear Cell, Noxema, and yeah. Your skin looks good. And even you saying that, I didn't believe. But it looks fine. I think you look fine. I think, look, could I put on some sunscreen? Yeah. Do you not? No. Do I have a couple blemishes going on right now? Yeah. Did I try to pop one prematurely? I don't know what we're talking about. When I was at Universal Studios... There was a teen tour that came through, and one of the girls had sunscreen all over her face. And they you could start- tell because she didn't rub it in, or she told you, and she did rub it in. She well, I'll tell you what she told me. It was it was sunscreen all over her face, and she hadn't rubbed it in yet. And I said, as a New York cop, I was walking around with a big Orville Redenbacher mustache and a nightstick. I'm a 1940s <laughs> cop. Hey, what's going on, guys? You know what the bathroom is? Hey, Shrek's over there. Waterworld's over there. And John Stamos would come through. I go, blow my whistle. Slow down, you're moving too fast. He'd go, nice. Like, okay, actor guy. He kept doing that? Stamos kept doing that? We kept doing I mean, what? I saw him once. Saw him once. Oh, you see, John Stamos would come on through. It made it sound oh. like, like he was always oh, yeah. coming on. Oh, man, I talked to John Stamos, Greg Maddox, Michael Jackson. Oh, my. Mary you talked to Michael Hill. Jackson? Uh, yelled at him. What, what's that? Uh, he walked through with the thing over his head, and I went, MJ, for life, baby. <laughs> and he kind of turned, you know. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was crazy. It was when he, being at the park that day, being they at the park. close the park down for him? Didn't, no. Didn't he do that kind of stuff? Walked through with a lot of people. And it was like, Michael's coming today. Like, as soon as you get in the break room, you got uh, Groucho Marx in the character break room, Waterworld people, Great Wolverine. Great show idea, by the way. Wolver- I Ca- wrote a whole animated room. show about the fucking, it's all of it, but with fake characters. Bobby Lee voiced a squirrel that they put in the park because he fell off a branch and got famous on YouTube. Anyway, I'll send you the link. And so. Uh, Can I watch it? Sure. And so, have you posted uh, it? No. Are you going to? Maybe. What do you guys think? <sighs> Can we get some water or some cold milk? <laughs> Not in that bring order. The, bring the volume up. Though. So, so uh, they tell you when somebody famous is coming through. And I remember the day uh, Michael's coming through. The guy as uh, Shrek walks through in Shrek. He's like, "Dude, Michael Jackson's going to do." You know, I can't hear him through the thing. I'm like, <laughs> "I can't hear." Groucho comes up. He said, "Michael Jackson's going to be in the park today." Uh, then Beetlejuice is there, like, "Oh, talking normally." I mean, it's just a crazy. The break room. 
it was crazy. Like I'm as a cop, you have people. How long griping. were you a cop until you turned into Wolverine? Uh, I was Wolverine, then went to cop. Why? I went tour guide, Fear Factor Live, Wolverine, cop. Oh my! <clears throat> because the pay was better as Wolverine. I was making eight fifty as a tour guide, twenty three an hour as Wolverine, and then Fear Factor was fifty two fifty. Eight dollars and fifty cents for the tour guide, but then twenty three as Wolverine. Yeah, to walk around and, and, that and tell was when people grapes were affordable. By the way, yeah. And then how much is the cop? Uh, same as Wolverine. It's a face character. So, so why why did you switch away from Wolverine? It was an easier outfit. Yeah, and I was just tired of like they told me I couldn't like I'd make jokes as Wolverine, and the, my boss was like, "Stop!" But you're allowed to make jokes as the cop. Yeah, because it's not from anything. It was one of my first jokes. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was just a random year cop. He's just like he's he. They're just mad because like be true to the character, Wolverine. What kind of Wolverine jokes would you make? I mean, bad ones. Also, just, I would just be riffing. I'd just still be doing me through, but with Wolverine voice, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know. Why did hey, man, the, quit making jokes as Wolverine. That's did, what they said. Why did the chicken cross the road? Why? Because uh, he found out he was HIV, HIV positive and he had to go get his medicine across the street. Oh. I mean, not that, but that was, I don't know why I just thought of that. But that, but stuff like that. But so, <laughs> we'll keep it in. But so, um, so as the cop, that was actually one of my first jokes on stage. I go, yeah, I played a 1940s cop. I wasn't from, from anything, so I'd make up my credits. So kids would be like, what are you from? And I was like, oh, I'm from a little uh, movie called I Got a Theater Degree, and this is where it fucking got me. And so sometimes I'd say I was cut out of Jurassic Park 2. And <laughs> I, I just when I'd act out my life. I mean, every day was a new what I'm right. from. You liked it. There was a certain um, uh, guy that ran like a water gun kiosk that would come by and go, what movie are you from today? And, like, or, and then it just became a running bit. Did you and have so, fun? Uh, that was the doing that was the, one of the most fun things I've done in Los Angeles. I'm making people's day, dude. <clears throat> making their vacay. I probably hit who knows two to three hundred people, families, couples a day. Just fucking being probably no doubt in my mind, like a, a family or sometimes a group of ten or a fucking whatever. They're all just walking away, and a lot of the other cops there. <clears throat> and I'm not throwing shade, but. That's so funny, dude. Would just kind of do like later. blow a whistle, get a haircut to a kid with long hair, or there's the bathroom. And they just walk around waiting for people to ask them for stuff. Where's Waterworld? Where can I get a chicken sandwich with a chicken tender inside of it? <laughs> you know? And so I'm like doing bits on bits on bits, just nonstop. And it's awesome. Uh, but the point of that was 1940s cop, Michael Jackson, Greg Maddox. What the fuck was I talking about before that? We were talking about why you like being the cop mm -hmm. instead of Wolverine. Wolverine was making jokes. You weren't allowed to make jokes as Wolverine. Yes. Uh, before that, yeah. So we were talking about uh, uh, the break room, Bobby Lee, the squirrel. Michael was Jackson's a show. coming through. Before Michael that, Jackson Michael Jackson coming through. through. Oh, sunscreen on the face. Sunscreen. Teen tour comes through. Sunscreen on the face. I'm doing bits with these uh, ten to fifteen, <clears throat> thirteen, fourteen. Do you need some water? Were you drinking less coffee? Wasn't that a thing? Yeah. You back to more coffee? One of these. No, only one of these. I used to have two or three a day. A large coffee like that. That's wild. Venti, yeah. And I went into a cardiologist and, and uh, he goes, how many uh, coffees do you have again? Like three Ventis. And he goes, stop that. Yeah. No more of that. I go, okay. So better now. What if you stop coffee entirely and you just start talking so slow? <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. This is all the coffee? I know. <laughs> it could have been. I know. Um, face screen, sunscreen. Face screen, sunscreen, kiddos. They're coming through teen tour. Do you know what a teen tour is? Teen tour, for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> uh, rich kids from mostly upstate New oh, York. Oh, like when they do it, the teen tour come through like the improv or something. That's one stop on their teen tour. Four or five big Greyhound buses of uh, nine to 14, 15 year old kids. They pay like 40 grand and they go on a trip to San Diego, San Fran, Vegas, LA, San Diego, I believe. And um, they're hitting the zoo, they're hitting the Golden Gate Bridge, Vegas, who the fuck knows what they're doing there. Go to the M&M store, see a strip stripper uh, go down on a fucking bicycle seat and then. Uh, see Brad Williams at the Mad Apple show and then uh, they're back to LA to go to Universal Studios Hollywood and here I am a 1940s cop kids coming up girl's got face, sunscreen all over her face building to this and she goes uh, I'm talking to them doing bits with the kids making them all laugh and whatever but this, they're kind of starting to be inappropriate right the girls and kids and I go and then they're like yeah this is this is Jacob like he like he doesn't talk much in the group, but he blah, blah, blah. But, and then one girl goes, yeah, but he's probably got the biggest shong. And oh. I'm like, whoa. And I, I started laughing because it caught me off guard. So I'm dressed as a 94 cop with his mustache. And I started laughing. So I turn in. Oh, you can't talk like that. <clears throat> Does your mother know you talk like that? 
My mother's dead. They all laugh. I'm like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. She's not dead. She's not dead. Christine's lying. She's she's goofing. And then I go, well, you got all that. You got bigger problems. You got all that sunscreen uh, on your face. You got to rub it in. You missed a spot. She goes, it's not sunscreen. I go, oh, yeah? What is it? That was a stupid question on my Let part. Let me guess what she said. It's, say it with me, folks, jizz in front of the whole team tour group. And when one of the counselors hears that, turns over and just immediately looks at me. Doesn't think about who the kid is who right. screamed at the fake cop, it's jizz. Looks at me to be like, what did you say to prompt her for that response? I just asked her if that was jizz on her face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm getting really sensitive to that light for some reason yeah. right now. Which one? That one. So, I'm not asking to do anything about it. I'm just letting you know, sometimes light, maybe, maybe. light gets me in a way, and it, and it kind of got me. Do you think it's the serum? I do think that there is something to this. There's something. I'm now just feeling my face. We Am I got, covering my face? We only got about 10. Get the camera here. See me? 15 what about minutes now? left. Uh, are balls now considered, <laughs> are balls now considered out downstairs boobs? Nathan from Tacoma, Washington wants to know. 15. <laughs> <laughs> Fake name. <laughs> Tanner Kid wants to know. Um, yes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. Oh, I love you. We got about, how, we're about, hey, what, 45? You say it like, like. 15. 15 left? Yeah. Great. Um, Rick, anything you want to talk about? <laughs> hey, do you watch stand-up specials? Sometimes. Not Who, my, uh Sometimes. Shane Gillis, I, uh, I watched, and it was incredible. Oh, man. I'd did, love to see Shane see on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's uh, one of my favorites. I saw him live at the Mothership a few uh, weeks ago, and I saw him in New York like a week before that. And he's so funny, man. Yeah. He's really uh, he's really funny. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, still, I'm still talking about <laughs> how much I love Jew. Ari special. Oh, yeah. I, th I think it's one, it's one of the greatest specials I've ever seen. He's getting seen. ready to do a new one. Ari's, Ari's very funny. That special made me look at him differently. Wow. Like, I always, I, you know, I, I, I knew, I, I actually know him better now He's than smart. when he lived in L.A. because I knew him, and he was nice, and he was just a nice guy. I didn't really know him very well, but now we've podcasted numerous times, and as you know, when you start podcasting with people, you get closer and you oh, get to yeah. know um, So the first time he did my podcast, I had watched, I, I, I was working, and then I listened to a special on the way back from work and uh, up setting up for, for it. So, like, I just listened to it, and I, and I was just like, this guy is... An incredible comedian. Yeah, and I just think I just look at him differently. Like he's that's funnier. Cool. I think he's funnier now after having seen that. Wow. Because I know like what he's capable of. I also know he said he worked on that special for like five plus years. Yeah. And not a lot of people do that. I think there's pros and cons to that, and I get it. Um, I think pros. Um, it, it's just you know you <clears throat> it, then you don't want to be touring. There's only so many times you could go to the same venue with the same special. Totally. Um, <clears throat> but like you could tell, oh, he really really worked on. Yeah. On that, his craft. I feel like that's indirectly. That's what I've been doing. I haven't been doing that because I've been trying to perfect it. I've been doing it because I've been slow to want to tour, and I've been doing twenty minute sets at a time. Yeah, and I have like this half hour of my hour. This half hour of it is is a fair amount of it. I've I've been like I started working on probably three plus years ago, four years ago maybe. Um, so you got thirty that you really enjoy. Um, I have 30 that like I feel like I could put out a half hour special and all that I'm ready for. Cool. I've never felt that way about my material. Anybody, yeah. Um, and then, uh, but I also like in the hour, I just, I, I, I've been expanding just on that same 30. Most of it is just finding new, but like I found like probably <laughs> another two minutes from this last set. Wonderful. Um, You're always exploring and always trying. I think you and I are the same like this. You don't, you can't be on stage and not have, have, and we don't even think this minimally, like one thing new, right? Like I, the, the a lot of the set has to feel... Even stuff we've been doing, <laughs> let me have some put some breath into it. Yeah. Which is something that's newer for me because I'm used to 20-minute 20, 20 sets. Yeah. Cause I, and I would do different 20-minute sets all the time, but now doing an hour, it's it's like I was I, I was intimidated because like, could I do an hour? And then it was like, oh, I, I don't... Flew by. I, I'm not... Oh, I, I was rushing this other stuff that I didn't even realize. Wow, yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, I have to do this to get to this, and you have to have this joke you know, before I could do this one. But now this thing, I could actually... And at first, my thought was like, all right, let me like slow down. It's like, oh, I've, 
I've been just speeding up with the other stuff. It's so interesting to hear you talk about this because this is exactly like you're truly at the beginning of. That's how I feel, especially for our being peers. On doing, a, a, just getting the repetitions and not just sets in town, which I know you're doing more of, which is great, but like, yeah, f doing an hour. It, doing it an just, hour is completely different than three twenty minutes, and I knew that. But I'm, I'm like, I'm. Well, there's a beginning it. and middle and end, and you're there's you're finding pace, and you're like, yeah. do I come out pounding for twenty, and then, and then kind of some stories, or do I kind of open with a story? Do I open with a close? Yeah. Like, just finding it took me a long time to get to being willing to do <clears> this, and the reason I want to do it now is, is uh, I, I want to, I always just wanted to do stand up because I wanted to keep getting better, and I loved finding stuff, but um, I need, I, I want to put a special out. I think it's time. What about this? How about 30 of stand-up and 30 of a live pod with you and I? For what? For a special? Sure. I want to do... I, I'm not going to burn... Let me call I, it Adam Ray Presents, Rick stand-up, <laughs> and, then and then some more, I, and then Adam and Rick I would, again. I would do that on the road. Like, we've talked about us doing a show where we each do a half hour and then end with a 30, 45-minute pod. I think it's bananas, and I'm only saying that, and I think after this next year of touring and just whatever I'm doing with Phil stuff, <clears throat> which I will take this moment to announce... Because I haven't yet. June fourth. Oh, our show. Yeah, yeah. June fourth is the. Uh, there's a Doctor Phil live on on May sixth, which you all um, uh, sold out by now. Sold out in a day. Burt Kreischer, Mark Norman, special guest unannounced, but the special guest announced Doctor Pimple Popper and Johnny Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls. It is going to be live streamed. Tickets are available. We'll put up the Chris, link. Is this the first time you're live streaming it? Yep. Good. Putting up the uh, the uh, link right here. Click on that. Go get tickets. Watch it if you don't live there. A lot of people have been saying, I want to come to L.A. I can't see it. Well, now you're getting a chance, and it's a bananas episode. Right after that. Now, the tickets tickets are probably what? Uh, live stream is 80 bucks. Think about that. $120. 7 dollars That doesn't make sense. You mean $79.99? Nope. $7.99. Why are you? That's, that's, in, they would have to be insane to not get that. That's not even. Yep. That's that's less than a ten dollar sandwich. Yep, that's less than an eight dollar sandwich. We'll use this as an advertisement. It's a little bit more than a seven dollar and fifty cent sandwich, but barely. Yep. And then you finish that sandwich, and it's done. And it's done. But this you get. You watch it again. Eat it again. Show it to your ex. Show also, it to you your... remember you're not going back thinking, oh, that seven dollar fifty cent sandwich uh, that made me laugh so much for an hour, <laughs> yeah. twenty minutes maybe. Yeah. This you get an. I mean, this is gonna be like a two hour show. Oh, so so you're saying so seventy nine per hour. So it's basically it's no it's fifteen ninety eight. Seven ninety nine for the whole Doctor Phil Live. It's May not fifteen ninety eight. Nope, it's seven ninety nine live stream. But why are you Click throwing right away there. so much money? Do you just want people to like see it? I mean, they're already selling out in a day. How much does it cost to see it live? Three hundred dollars? Not even. Four hundred dollars? Four easy payments of seventeen ninety nine. No, it costs live like forty bucks. Wait a minute. So you're telling me people <clears throat> not only could they watch the full two hours. From the comfort of their home, which is a lot of times easier. Oh, we have to get a babysitter. I have to put on a skirt. Nope. I have to put on my funny hat with take a flower Take your dick on out. It. Watch it. Take your tits out. Watch it. So let's say you're at home and there's four of you. Shoom, right? boom. So that's that's $32, right? Yep. No. seven ninety nine a person. Click. Link. Wait. No, but I'm saying if you're at home <laughs> watching it with three other people, yeah. everybody has to pay seven ninety nine. <sighs> Boy, I, sounds like I'm leaving money on the table. You're telling me that I can invite three of my hottest slut friends over, <laughs> big tits, fat ass, beautiful, and they could. Come hey, that's over. my mom's friend you're talking okay, about. Okay, <laughs> okay. And for seven ninety nine, not only could I, um, yeah, yeah, watch yeah, the watch special, the but they could watch it too. Yeah, yeah. So that's May sixth, but June fourth, guys. Let me make sure <laughs> I understand this right. <laughs> we'll put up the link right here. May 6th, Dr. Phil Live, Comedy Store. I like the idea of a podcast, but it's it's an hour yep. of that. Yep. It's just a, an hour commercial. Oh, yeah. I think I I have uh, an idea for a show. I did it as a bit, and I, I have a outline for it, for um, a dark comedy about the infomercial uh, people. Like the uh, well, not, My not, QVC experience, I could tell you <clears> some, some, some fucking stories. Yeah. Or as Wolverine would say, some low gin times. Ooh. I didn't do that in the audition, but I did say when they asked me, I came in in a dark black tight muscle tee. I was more jacked, and I uh, jacked, and I walked in, and uh, they go, "Who are your friends?" And I go, "Peter, Eric, Craig." I didn't know any storm. They go, "What about Storm and Captain America?" I go, "They're okay." <laughs> I go, "Craig picked me up from the airport, so he's kind of top priority in the, in the in the call list." 
One guy laughed. The rest stone cold Steve Austin faces. So June 4th. Doc- the audition it was all people who were waiting to, to play Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Am I in the wrong room? <laughs> so June 4th, Dr. Phil Live Comedy Store. I'm announcing the lineup right here. Rick Glassman is a part of the show. First time. And guess what? He's wearing the shirt of one of the other guests, Sal Volcano from Impractical Jokers. Uh, and uh, this will be uh, a first time podcasting and meeting our third guest. Joining Rick Glassman and Sal Volcano at the Comedy Store June 4th, 8 p.m. for the Dr. Phil Live Show. Host of The Armchair Expert. Star of Parenthood. Star of... Uh, Hit and Run. Hit and Run. Great movie. Chips. Chips. Husband, father, uh, friend. Co- commercial actor, friend, and... Uh, oh, there's got to be something else. Punked. Punked. Wow, dude. Uh, and just all-around fascinating fella. Monica Padman. Yep. <laughs> Dax Shepard will be joining Rick Glassman and Sal Volcano June 4th at the Comedy Store. The show sold out, but... Um, you can get some streaming tickets. That one, that one because there's so we, many big guests, pro- you could probably make that $20. I don't know. We also, get, actually, are you streaming know. that one? No. no yeah, I, don't no, stream that I don't one. I don't think so. Um, don't that's June 4th. That um, but, uh, but doing a uh, live after all this, the live tie show that we did at Dynasty Typewriter, I know I you just... get it now. And... Can you just tell, like, right. it was, and I'm not even joking. I've had some fun times on stage. I've had some fun times off stage. <laughs> a lot of them have involved you. Tyso pods, never not, never not fun. This, blast. And sober. How you feeling? So, I'm always sober. Well, we a little oh, stony baloney. weed. Yeah. I think of sober. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We usually do my podcast high and yours not high. Yes. It's great. Uh, the live podcast, Brent Morin showed up even before that. It was just like so fun. Yeah. And it was, that's why I love you speaking to the, uh, Cobb's San Francisco audience of being so tie, so enthused and just take your shoes off ready. This live audience was that, and it was really cool for me to feel for you. And it was extra cool to feel for me being a part of that world. And what do you mean? Oh, uh, feel what? All the um, attention to bits gotcha. and the support people of... People that knew, like, people came in knowing the tone already. Oh, I sang, the weed's kicking in, people cheered. Uh, we did bits that we've done on the show, or like, uh, or whatever, and they, or there were just fun, a lot of man. things that they were all about, and it was like a real, like, they're there for that. Everybody was, and it was packed, and it was awesome. And we just laughed so much, and we were fucking on it. There was so many layers... That's, I think, what is great about when we jam is that, like, there's just, like, there's chapters, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not just a one, um, anyway, but San Francisco was good, yeah? <laughs> yeah, th- th- and that live show was really fun, man. Yeah. Uh, doing doing uh, doing this in, in front of an audience, like, when we did the Netflix as a joke a couple years ago, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, audience yeah. was just the, the, the <laughs> producers that were there, but there's a fair amount of them people yeah, yeah, walking yeah. by. It's so much fun. Yeah, dude. I love getting high. I, and also, it's fine not high, too, obviously. Totally. I do most of my, most of my podcasts. I'm, I'm not. I don't have anything. I'm not even coffee. But, like, something about just getting high with you. Yeah. And and then adding <laughs> adding the, 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 the audience aspect of it, or more specifically, um, putting us in a situation where uh, we feel more performative. Yeah. Um, like, that taps into that other part of the mind where it's just like, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. Just performance. Oh yeah, it's so much fun. Do you have a dream guest for Tyso? Um, no. Macklemore. I mean, if I'm if like you mean an impossible guest, Macklemore. Who truly though? Like, I want to have Will back on, and we've been talking about it. Great. Um, what about Jada? Uh, I would, but Will. Uh, sincerely, we actually have talked about it. Um, and what about Brad Pitt. Uh. I would love to have Brad Pitt because I have a Brad Pitt story. Oh, I know. Um, but I, and I've told it a couple of times. In fact, I just had Dax on last week. Great. And I, I like I don't think I could talk about this. And I told it to him. And afterwards, he's like, "You shouldn't." And I cut it out. I also told it to Tom Segura because he had Brad on. You know, he's friends with Brad. Oh, that's but, very cool. But I like I took it. I took <laughs> yeah. it out. Um, but if I had Brad on, I would be like, I could tell. I could tell the story with him. I feel like. Can I tell you who I? This is what I love about and Tyson. LeBron, obviously. And LeBron. Oh, my God. This, oh, my God. That's going to happen, by the way. Just, spe- I mean, I'm not even a speaking into the, but it's speaking into, speaking into the universe. Maybe. 
My oh, name would be JJ Redick. I'd love that, to have him. I think LeBron would really find you funny. And I think just your ties to Cleveland and basketball. And also we have a fair amount of mutual friends. Like there are bits. There are bits to be had. Oh, yeah. I selfishly would love to see, and this is what I love about just getting so, being such a fan of the show too. It's like one of my favorite bands is The Head and the Heart. Those are all now my friends. It's awesome that I love that when I go to shows, it's hanging. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, yeah, now I get to watch one of my favorite bands. And I feel that way with comics even. Totally. And so selfishly for, for Tyso, I'd love to see Tom Hanks with you. Oh, it's one of my yeah, favorite yeah. actors, and I think he, I think he, watching him try to play with you. Tom Hanks would be an unbelievable one. Uh, he was he was my favorite, one of my favorites growing up for a while. I mean, I guess still maybe is. Will Ferrell, too. Um, but actually, I'd say Hanks over Ferrell because I think Hanks' energy is like, I just feel like that guy walks into a room. Even you see him on talk shows. Will's... Will, if he's not doing a character on a talk show, is pretty subdued. And I've heard that, too, just about him. Um, a little more even keeled. Tom, I feel like, is, like, just running for office all the time. But not trying to. Like, he's... Well, he's, not, tr- he's not trying to run for office. Better Hanks movie, movie, Philadelphia or Toy Story? Um, could we add another one? It's AIDS versus Andy. What's that? Uh, throw the burbs in there. Wow. Haven't seen it. You've never seen The Burbs. And he's one of my favorite actors. Um, Damn it. That's one That's one I have. Do you know about The Burbs? Oh, yeah. I, the poster is iconic. We should watch The Burbs. Down. We should. If you and could, I did could a put pa- it on? If you and I started a Patreon together, and I say Patreon <laughs> because we couldn't put this on YouTube, I would like to. Rewatch? Uh, I would like to do. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll just watch yeah, man. Tom Hanks movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, we talked about Those this on the episodes. last pod of the watching The West Wing with you, me, and Brent. Right. Never seen it. Going back to rewatch it, and Brent had... Watching it for the first time. I mean, yeah, if somebody we, if call we, if, Smartless. If we start an unofficial West Wing pod. Yeah, and have Alice and Janney on. I drank with her once in fucking... Uh, 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 it's a real story. I'm just blanking on the country. Um, uh, it was for Spy. I went out and did a week on Spy. I only had three lines, but I did, was there for a week at the Ritz-Carlton in... Um, not Latvia. Not Prague. Fuck. There were there was like you could there was like oh, there was a river uh, oh Jesus fucking Michael McDonald and I flew business class he took a Valium I think I took one with him I watched Valium it. or Volume Valium passed out woke up in starts with a B bre 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 uh fuck I gotta remember this you <laughs> you ain't going anywhere uh, name a country Berlin no damn it. <laughs> Fuck! Now I gotta look up where. Uh, 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 oh man! Bur- um, do you guys have the internet back there? Yeah. Can you look up where the movie Spy, the comedy, was filmed? I think it starts with a B. Not Beirut. By the way. Not Lebanon. Worst spy. <laughs> uh, pro- not Prague. Uh, um, Croatia. Nope. Um, damn it. Budapest. Yeah. Budapest. Or Budapest, or Budapest, Joe, um, Joe Pesci, Buda. Have you seen that Joe Pesci and John Leguizamo movie called Budapesti Est? John Leguizamo was in Pest. Great movie. He was great. Where was that filmed? Budapest. So, 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 you see Budapest? So, Bud- Alice and Janney drank with her in Budapest. And you think she remembers? Let's get her on the phone. People, people, Could people. Could you Google um, Alice and Janney's phone, phone number? Jane Shield, Mia Dag, right. First base. <laughs> Wait, so uh, this was great. Um, uh, we'd have Rob Lowe on. Wasn't he in West Wing? Oh, yeah. What wasn't he in? My mom. No, he was in her too. <laughs> did, she, did, Rob, did your mom sleep with Rob Lowe? <laughs> Probably. Who fucking hasn't? That's a that's a huge allegation to put on <laughs> Rob Lowe. And, and, and like, you know what you did. You know who you are. You know what I saw. You know, he might not come on the podcast. That's now. a podcast about Rob Lowe fucking your mom. <laughs> You know who you are. You know your what mom. you. D- <laughs> well, yeah. Rob Lowe fucked your mom. <laughs> That's the name of the podcast. That's the name of this, at least the title of this episode. <laughs> Adam Ray, Rob Lowe fucked my mom with special guest Rick Glassman. <laughs> are we on a split screen? Are we on wide? You're going to want some editing on this. None. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so rickglassman.com for tickets. 
I uh, no, you'll post about I'm, it. I'm punch up. I'm, I, I I haven't put on my Me website too. yet. Punch yeah. up live. Punch up dot live slash. We'll right put up my point. punch up live, and we'll put up Rick's. Great. Go there for tickets. I also just post. Give us your email. Give us your email. Also... Give us I your just... email. Good night, everybody. I just give us your email list. <laughs> <laughs> so I just posted because uh, uh, if you <clears> sign up, you just give your email uh, and your you know the city you're in. So we there's no spam. They just email you when the yeah. tickets in your area. And they, you put up a video to like an exclusive video. I just posted an 18 minute set that you could, if you want to see an 18 minute stand up set of mine, it's all improv crowd work. It's a carrot, if you will. On Punch Up, you post something that you, there's not. For example, I will be posting uh, later uh, uh, this week um, a, uh, a, a Budapest, a, a piece of <laughs> a clip of me in Budapest with Alice and Janney. A clip of my crowd work special dropping April 26th called Bigfoot and Cigarettes on my YouTube. Check it out. I'll be posting a clip of that on Punch Up. Give me your email. You can see a chunk of it. Yeah, it's but free. There's nothing. Free. You just give us your email in your city so we know. Helps us find city. out where you're going to be, where, how you can come yeah. to the shows. Uh, all right, Rick, last question. Um, true or false? Mm -hmm. Do you have any pets? That's a really good question. Uh, I consider I, I say yes because of my parents' cat that I got with an ex girlfriend and like I found, but like it, she doesn't live with me, mm. so I don't I'm not living with any pets. But she's my cat. I still feel dream pet for the podcast. Oh, I thought you were telling me to dream about a pet. <laughs> uh, I want to get a dog for the pod and for my for me. I just haven't done it. I want a dog so much. You just got a second. Yeah. My mom goes no no no. Kid next, not dog. I go. All right, whatever, mom. I go. Hey, bitch, why don't you go suck off Rob Lowe? That's what I was going. Oh, uh, but it was my so mom. You want me to say it. say it? Yeah. So, so ooh, ooh, <laughs> there's the cold open. <laughs> That's punch up dot live slash Rick Glassman. Guys, Rick Glassman, take your shoes off as the pod. One of my best buds, the funniest guy. Anytime he. Post about being somewhere live. Go see him. And if you see him on the street, say hello. Give him a hug. No, but just no touching. Don't touch him, though. But you can say what's up from a comfortable eight feet distance. You can come closer. Don't come closer. You come a little closer. Five feet max. Five feet preferred. It's fine if you come closer. Four foot four. No larger than a Brad Williams. Guys, AdamRayComedy.com for tour dates. Uh, uh, me. Cut to me. Now back to Adam. <laughs> uh, Denver, Comedy Works, downtown, April 18th through the 20th. And then, of course, Dr. Phil Live, May 6th, live stream. Get those tickets right here. Um, two shows at the Comedy Mothership. Those are sold out, but look out for those soon. Dr. Phil Live's, Dr. Phil Live, June 4th with Rick Glassman, Sal Volcano, and Dak Shepard. Uh, come see me on the road, Dr. Phil Live. Subscribe to the podcast, uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You know all that? Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Put them all up there. Put a, Shout out Rick right now. Put them all up below. Put his handle. Put it all below there. It's all just at Rick Glassman. Okay. You don't have to do Back that. Back to me. Put it all. Put all my. But it all. But it's it all. all just AdamRayLive.tv. Okay, we got it. Did you have fun? Yeah. Cool. I think I'd like to go get uh, a little bite to eat. Ooh. If you know what I mean. We'll be right back. And we're back. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. That was great. That was great. I've been holding this in this whole time. Bam. <laughs> we keep that? Can we keep it? <laughs> Yes! 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 <laughs> <laughs>